In today's video, I'll be talking about the new interface enhancements in the Visual Builder of Divi 3.2. Hi, my name is Mac. If you're new to this channel, this channel is all about marketing and web design. So if you want to be notified, please do hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell notification. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. Today's tutorial is made possible by DiviCake.com and check out their huge selection of Divi themes, layouts and plugins. The link is in the description below. And also, if you'd like to learn how to design websites using Divi, I have a course which has a discount. Again, all that information is in the show notes below. Okay, so right now I'm in my visual builder. So the first thing I'm going to do is to load a pre-made layout. So I'm going to come all the way to the bottom here and click my expand settings click this plus button here and then I'm going to load a layout. So the layout I'm going to go with is just a basic layout. It doesn't need to be anything fancy because all I'm doing here is to show you all these changes. So I'm going to click here on the uh, web agency layout and then I'm going to go ahead and use this one right here. So this is going to take a while to load. Okay, so now that I have this loaded up, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start sh by showing you the fine-tuned unit adjustments. So these can be found by going into the text modules mostly. So I'm going to click here on my module settings. So you can see here that this is a header and also it has this paragraph text. So to, uh, to uh, get to that, we're going to click on design, text, and over here, now we can see that when we mouse over this unit here, I can now click this little arrow and this is going to increase as I click on this. And this is something that we didn't have before. Now you can be really, really precise in choosing the exact value that you need. Whereas before we had the sliders or we had to type in the actual number. And also, if you take a look at the slider here, this is more responsive. Before, it didn't used to work, especially when you had large numbers over here. The other thing is when you click and press down, uh, you'll notice that the size increases and then it starts going faster. So this is also something that you can do if you want to work really fast. And what you could also do is if you want to use your keyboard arrows, you can just click inside this area here and then use your up and down arrows okay so this is what i'm doing the up and down arrows okay so those are the enhancements to the uh, fine-tuned unit adjustments okay so next let's move on to the next update and this is the gesture based unit control so to see this we have to go into one of these modules so i'm going to come over here to uh, my module settings click on design so what you want to do is to come over here to spacing. So this is where you're going to find these uh, these updates. So first of all, if I mouse over the word top, we can see now that we have this dial. And as soon as I start clicking, uh, moving this dial to the right, you can see I'm actually adjusting my margins. And if I do that in the opposite direction, you can also see that this is also going up in the opposite direction. So this is really, really cool because it makes just it makes this easier for you to uh, make those quick adjustments. Now, here's the thing: if you click on this ch uh, chain icon like that, if you start using this dial, you'll notice that this starts happening uh, both to the top and to the bottom, and also left and right. If you activate this, okay, like that. So I think this is a great addition. I'm going to just reset this, and then. We're going to come over here to the padding because it also works on the padding. So again, I'm going to activate this chain icon like that. And then if I start moving my padding like this, you can see my padding is being applied to the top and also to the bottom. And if I come over here to the left, again, this applies to the left and the right all at the same time. So I'm just going to come back here and reset my values. So if you want to do if you want to do it on each side uh, individually, that's fine. You can do that by just um, doing so here on the top, on the bottom, and then on the left, like that, and also on the right. So this these are the new gesture based unit control. Now these can also be found on the borders. So if you come over here to the border, as you can see, uh, I can adjust my rounded corners using this dial like that and this applies to all the corners now if you want to use this to each and each individual corner you just have to break this chain like this or disable the chain and then you can do that like that so that side as you can see is now different to the other sides 
And then if you reactivate this, you can see that uh, this applies to all the corners. Okay, and then if you want to bring it back to where it was, you can just drag this back like that until you're happy with the size. Okay, let's move on to the next thing, and this is the new improved color picker. So as you can see here, this is uh, we never used to have this before, and this has just made it easier for us to access the color picker. If I want to change my colors here, I can just go in and make my changes to my colors. But before I can go in and demonstrate uh, the color picker, I'd like to say as well that uh, it is a good, good rule of thumb to first add your colors of your color palette before you start applying them because it's going to take you long to uh, every time you want to make a change to a color to go in and paste that color every single time. So ideally the best workflow is to start by adding your colors initially. So let me show you where you can add those colors. So I'm just going to close this for now and then I am going to come over here to my dashboard. So I'm going to discard and exit and then I'm going to come over all the way down here to DV theme options. And we can see here that this is where we have our default color palette. So if you make changes to this color palette, like for example here, I'm just adding my colors like that. Click on the next one. Okay, so right now I'm just adding some random colors here. But uh, in your case, you have to use the colors that work with your brand. Okay, so let's say these are my colors. I can just hit save changes. And then that has updated. So now I can go to my pages and make all those changes. So I'm going to come back over here to edit and then go to my visual builder. So now let's say I need to make some changes to my uh, colors for my text. I can just click here on this gear icon and then I can click on design text. And now we can see we have the updated color, uh, color palette. So I can now choose my colors. So as you can see here straight away, I can see what I am choosing. And this is great because this is happening in real time. And this is um, this makes it easy for me to make decisions on which colors I can use. Okay, so again, if you want to make changes to your heading text, again, you just come to the heading and the color palette pretty much follows you everywhere you go. So this is this is a great change. Okay, so um, if you also come over here to, let's say, the borders, again, like I mentioned, every place that needs a color, the color palette really follows you which is great okay so i'm just gonna close this for now right so the next update is the visual previews for media input so these are mainly going to apply to videos and images so let's do that so i'm going to come over here and create a, a new section and then i'm just going to make this uh, two columns so first of all i'm going to add my video like that and you'll notice that this goes in straight away in the preview. And I will be talking more about this uh, later on in this video. Right, so say I want to add a video from uh, YouTube or Vimeo. So I'm just going to come over here and go to my YouTube channel. So let's say I'm just going to take any random video here. Okay, I'll go with this one here. I'm going to copy the URL like that. So I'm going to come back over here and click this gear icon. Click on insert from URL. I'm going to paste it, insert into post. So now we can see here that this is the preview that we are talking about. So we can actually see the preview here. And then you can also see it here as it's added onto the page. So let's say you're not using these. Now let's try doing the same thing on images. So if I come over here, click this plus button and add our image module. Again, we can click in here. Uh, let's say we're going to go with this image right here. Upload an image. Again, we can see that this image is right here in the preview. So this is actually quite nice because we can see what needs what, what's going where and we can also see what image is here before we apply it, which is great. Now let's move on to the next thing, which is the gallery management. I'm going to close this for now and then we're going to create a new section, a regular section, and we're just going to have a single column. And for this, I'm going to add my gallery module. So let me start off by adding our images, right? So I'm going to click this plus button here and I'm just going to add some random images. So I'm going to go with these four images. Uh, we need one more. So I'll go with, uh, let's go with this one right here. I'm going to click on select. So now we can see that our images are now in uh, this area right here in the preview. 
And the good thing about this preview is you can actually make your changes right here. You can rearrange things and make sure you have uh, your images wherever you want them. If you want to add more, you can click this plus button here to add more. And also, as I make changes here, this is happening in real time. If you take a look here, we can see that uh, these thumbnails are being uh, moved as I'm changing them here in this preview. So as I mentioned, you can add your more images right here like that. And let's say you want to add, um, say, these images like that. Right, so we've just added four images. Now, right now, they're not showing. So what you need to do here is to add eight, and then you'll notice that all our images will show. Now, I, I prefer not having this text right here to describe the images, but if this is something that you like, you can go ahead and leave it as it is. But if you want to get rid of that, you can always come here to Elements and then click on Show Title and Caption. Set this to No. That just takes away that. Okay, so next thing, if you come over here to Design, you can actually go into our borders. Now, using the dial, I can actually add my rounded corners. And you can see here that uh, I've just added the rounded corners to all my images, which is fantastic. And if we do need to add anything here, uh, our color palette is also available. Okay, so that's our gallery. So it makes it easier for you to manage your gallery, make updates to it, and this is a very good workflow. Right, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is the rapid prototyping. Now, what this is, is all our modules now come in with default content. So let me show you what I mean by that. So if I come over here and uh, let's add a new section over here. So let's say we, we are starting to build a new page. So if I click on regular and uh, let me start off with a single row and I'm going to add an image in this like that. So as soon as I add my image, we notice that we have a default placeholder here. And this is just the area which shows where the image is going to be. So this happens with all our modules. So this is great because this gives you a visual presentation of how the page is going to look as compared to how it was before. So here I can also add, uh, let's say, these three columns. And I can add, let's say, a blurb in this one. So as I add the blurb, you can see here that it comes with content, which I think is very, very good. Okay, so you can still do the usual. You can um, adjust that. Uh, you can copy it, you can drag it to position. And over here, I can click this plus button here, add, uh, let's say, a video. And again, as I've shown you before, uh, this video will come with a preview. So let's say you want to add uh, another section and you want to add more modules. So you can always come in here and uh, let's go with one third, two thirds. And let's say on this left one here, you want to add a call to action. So you can just add your call to action like that. And you can see here, it comes with the content added in. If I come over here to the link, this is what um, adds the button in place. So you can see now the button is in place. And then over here, say you want to add your email opt-in. Again, that comes with content already filled in. So this is great if you want to quickly create a prototype of how your page is going to look. And uh, before you start adding all your images, this will be a very good starting point. So let's say you're happy with this layout. You can always go in now and replace these images with actual images. So if I come over here into this um, gear icon to access my uh, image settings, I can click on design and then I can come over here to, in fact, I need to come to content and add our image. So to add our image, I'm just going to choose, let's say, this image right here. Upload an image, and you can see it's added. Now, let's say I'm not happy with that. I can just come over here, and because I can see it in the preview, it's very easy for me to make quick changes. So if I click that, now my image is added in. I can then save, and then when it comes to the bottom here, you can always go in and make adjustments to your text. So while we're here, the other uh, update also is the spell checker. So the spell checker is in the inline editing now. So let's say I uh, intentionally misspell this word. So what happens is it gets an underline, as you can see, and then if you mouse over it, it gives you the correct spelling. And then all you have to do is to click on it, and that's your update to that. So this ensures that uh, all your 
copy on your page has the right spellings. And I think this is a great improvement. So let's move on to uh, the last item, which is the improved option clarity. So over here, to see this, we need to go into the background. So I'm going to come over here to my section settings, click on background. So before, we never used to have uh, this text, which lets you know what this is. All we had was just this bucket. So now it tells us what exactly it is. So if I click here, we can see this is uh, telling us to add a background gradient. And this one is to add a background image. And then this one is to add a background video. Okay, so this is great because now it tells us exactly what it is. So if you're new, this could be quite confusing, but this now has been resolved. Now, the last and final thing is, you know, when I spoke about the rapid prototyping, this may be something that you may not like. So if you want to disable that, all you got to do is to come all the way to the bottom here to expand settings. Click on these three little dots here right at the end. And then if you scroll all the way down, you'll notice that add placeholder content to new modules. Right now it's on by default, but you can set it to no. Right now when you do that, notice the difference. So let's say I need to add a blurb to this. So if I click this plus button here and click on the blurb, you'll notice that no content is added in. And then for this content to start appearing here, you need to start typing over here. So, so you can see here as I'm typing, now it starts to appear over there. So this, in my opinion, is the old way of doing things. And I prefer having the placeholder text and the placeholder content because it just gives me an idea of where the content is. And in my opinion, this is a great improvement. So these are the uh, updates to DV 3.2. Go ahead, try them out. And as I mentioned, if you want to um, upgrade to the latest uh, version, all you got to do is to go into your dashboard area. In fact, let me exit out of here. So what you want to do is to click updates a few times because sometimes you may not get the update automatically. So this just refreshes your, um, your computer. And then if the update is there, you'll see it right here. And to confirm what update you're running, all you got to do is to come over here to appearance, click on themes. And then if you click on theme details, this will show you what version it is. And in this case, we're running version 3.2. Today's tutorial is made possible by divicake.com. Check out their huge selection of Divi themes, layouts, and plugins. The link is in the description below. So that does it for today's video. If you like this video, please do give me a thumbs up and also do hit the subscribe and the bell notification. Until next time, thanks for watching and see you soon.